Simon, I'm Genevieve. I'm from RDC Momentum. Um, I'm part of the Momentum Arts. And um, yeah, we, we, we collaborated in, in building this SNI metaverse world that we're busy hacking in. So I have a few questions for Tree Dao. Sure. And let's start with what is Tree Dao? So the TreeDAO is this project to um, see if we could use Web3 technology, like to, to use um, like a decentralized organization like a DAO to protect woodland, to sort of buy and and um, and protect woodland. It's kind of similar to um, you know how people used to sort of like raise money to buy a common or a park um, together. And it's, a, it's my attempt to sort of try and solve the uh, tragedy of the commons, which is a, a well-known problem where you don't really own the things around you. So um, we thought it'd be kind of cool to, to see if we could build a, a decentralized autonomous organization that actually lets people own part of this beautiful woodland in uh, in Tisbury. And that's actually a picture of it um, behind me. So yeah, we successfully raised um, 100 F. So at the time it was about 100,000 pounds. And we, um, we bought a forest and we built all the tooling. So there's like a member's site as well. So if you own one of the NFTs or one of the, the tree tokens, then you can log into the website and vote on what happens to the forest. And um, and so far there's about 70 or 80 members who are actually, uh, who are, you know, sharing joint uh, stewardship and custody of this uh, beautiful ancient woodland just outside London. Beautiful. And how do you, how do you, how do you, how did you get started? And, and what are some of the tools that you use to build this down? Mm. So the like when I when I started this back in March, there wasn't like DAOs were just kind of this new thing that everybody was getting excited and talking about, and there isn't really a lot of tooling tooling for them. So uh, I wrote most of the code myself, um, and had some help from a few friends, and we just set up a website and we sent out one tweet on Monday morning that said we're we're building a DAO, we're going to raise a hundred F, and we're going to buy a forest. And by Thursday nice. morning, I think we'd we'd, we'd raised a hundred F and. Uh, yeah, it was just it was crazy how how quickly people bought in um and then it took us actually about two months to find a forest we had to go around and actually like we were like, oh crap now we've actually raised all this money we better go and buy a forest and then it took about another month to work out how to legally do all of the paperwork because there is no structure that supports this sort of like community organization in in uk law at least um and it's very very difficult to convince um conveyancing solicitors to let you buy an actual real world forest with money from people on the internet who you don't even know their name. So that took that took about a month as well. Uh, yeah, so it was it, it took about three months to get up and running. But now we've owned the forest for I guess all of spring, all of uh, sorry, all of autumn. Yeah, all of autumn, all of uh, when did we buy it? We had one spring there. So we I guess we uh, April and May, we saw the bluebells. And then we had a beautiful summer. And then now it's back into winter. So we've owned it for three seasons now. Yeah, spring must be spring must be a really interesting time there. Yeah, it's absolutely um, the most beautiful little place. We looked at about 10, 10 woodlands and a lot of them were zero biodiversity. They were just plantation um, birch trees and there was no birds and nothing because it's just it's monoculture. And then when we came to this this little woodland, as soon as you walk in, you can this is a picture of the background, but you can see there's a there's beech trees and ash trees and there's like holly and heather and there's um, yeah, bluebells and, and you can just hear birds everywhere because it's, it's like such high biodiversity. Um, and we just fell in love with it immediately. And we thought like, this is the one. So. Sounds like a perfect place to, to be doing this. So um, then we, you know, surely there were challenges and what was, so you, you think the governance of, of it all and hmm. was the, the biggest challenge? Yeah, so there's a lot of there's no one really knows how to link decentralized organizations on chain to the real world yet. And there isn't really a mechanism that that works well. In UK law, you can have um, companies or like companies that are limited by guarantee companies that are limited by shares charities, and there's thing called a community interest corporation. And a community interest corporation is actually pretty close to what we wanted to do. Like, it's um, it would be good, except you can't change the articles of association like the government mandated that all community interest corporations have to have the same articles of association. And some of the rules in the articles of association say that um, you have to have a treasurer and a secretary and everyone has to meet in person and you have to take a role of everybody who's 
like a, a role of everyone who's voting on on issues. And it's like that's exactly the opposite of a decentralized organization. Like right. the power of a DAO is that you can become a member just by buying a token or an NFT. And if you don't like the way the project's going, you can just sell your token or your NFT. So allowing people to sort of buy and sell their membership of the DAO as on, on the universal secondary market, which is what the NFTs give us, is like the big thing. Like, you know, people will pay a lot more money for things if they know that there's a secondary market. Like you wouldn't buy a car for 100,000 euros if you could never sell that car to anybody else. But you buy a car for 100,000 euros from Tesla and then you know you can sell it for 70,000 euros in five years time, right? So the, gotcha. the, a good secondary market means that there's, it's a lot easier to raise funds for things. So. The fact that we could, the fact that we could, um, we could, you know, we could build this die, we rate this DAO, we raised a, a hundred F, and some of the members have already sold their have already sold their tokens, and, and some of them even made some money out of it. Um, so yeah, yeah like the universal I, secondary market is what sort of enables this sort of fundraising. I was wondering how your ecosystem is going with your community, like um, how mm -hmm. you invigorate it, and um, you know, how do you find it as a as a living whole? Um, yeah. how's how's the health of your of your ecosystem with your community as well yeah so we do it the wrong way around like and i really, really strongly urge other people who want to do a dow to get the community right first and then do the fundraising and the tooling right we did it backwards because at, back in march there wasn't really like there wasn't really a good model for how DAOs should work now everybody's just uses discord right which i actually don't like a lot like chat is what you use when you don't have specific tools right like but things like um voting and governance and proposing measures and tracking the results of those measures like all of those things that go into running a, a well-run community that DAO tooling just didn't exist back then so we did it the wrong way around we didn't really have a community first like i don't even know who the, who the other people were that had sent me like 100 f until you know until a couple of months after the project launch people were like oh yeah i gave you i gave you some f for that project um, so I do think that you should build a community first before you try and build a project. Um, so, and the other problem that's been really challenging is the price of Ethereum went up so much and the cost of gas right. went up so much that we did a liquidity token first. So we issued, um, we issued like 5,000 tree tokens and then we gave those tree tokens to the initial backers and then they can use the tree tokens as their membership token or they can convert them into NFTs. And the idea was you could sell or gift the NFTs as like, you know, a more giftable, um, a more giftable thing. But the price of Ethereum gas went up so much that the cost to turn the tree token into an NFT became more than the NFTs were worth, which really sure. stopped the conversion process um, dead in its tracks. Like NFTs work if there's if they're really, really valuable. So if you're buying a, you know, a board Ape Yacht Club NFT and it costs 10,000 or 100,000 or a million dollars or whatever it costs now, then you don't care about paying 150 quid of gas. But if you're buying a tree token and I wanted them to cost about 40 pounds, which is what you'd spend on like a nice bunch of flowers, you know, it'd be sure, like, sure. the idea would be like, instead of giving your mum flowers for Christmas, you could give her um, a, like one 5,000th share in the woodland where she can go and have a picnic, right? So sure. it's, a much, it's a much nicer gift. But unfortunately, gas fees relative to the, the value of each NFT was is just made the project um, impossible to, to to move forward on the Ethereum chain. Um, you should definitely and look at Poly then. I think. Yeah, but the problem is now we're stuck on Ethereum on on that one chain, and also like that right. Ethereum is where all the money is, right? So if I wanted to raise the hundred F to buy the forest, I needed to do it where all the money was, right? You can't ask people sure. to like move to Polkadot or Kusuma or. or some other chain because there's just no money there. So, yeah. So, and and what do you, what are your, what do you think the future of of this DAO and of, of this um, economy and ecology? What do you see the future? What's your vision? Mm. I, I really think there's, I think DAOs like distributed distributed autonomous organizations is a piece of technology that humans haven't had before. And I really think it's it's game changing. I don't think people have really clocked on how important this is yet. If you go back like 13,000 years when humans started using cash for the first time, like that was a, that is FinTech, that's financial technology. Like the ability to say like, you know, I don't need to swap spears for fish. I can swap spears for shells and you can swap shells for fish later, right? That is technology that allowed commerce to to to, to thrive. And there's many things in our society right now, like there's this concept of a conditional commitment, right? And everybody kind of intuitively understands it. Like 
I will, I don't know, like if you, like, if you, like back in the seventies, if you were gay, you'd say like, I'll, I'll march for gay rights, but only if a thousand other people will. So we're always safe, right? Or I'll, if you, the Grateful Dead, it's like, I'll go to, I'll go to Central Park and smoke a joint if 10,000 other people will, because like <laughs> that, that I'll do X if other people will, this conditional commitment is a really, really powerful way of moving society forward. It, it stops, it stops taboos from repressing so, social progress. Now, Recently, we've seen things like Wall Street bets. They um, they use a piece of technology called memes to to coordinate human behavior. So they'll say like, "I'll buy GameStop shares if everyone else does, because then we can make GameStop go to the moon and we can sh- short the short sellers and um, squeeze the short sellers." And but imagine like they had they managed to cause financial markets chaos using just meme technology. Imagine how much chaos they could cause if they had smart contract technology where it wasn't ever in doubt that people were going to like do it. It's like literally written into the contract. So this conditional commitment idea that like you can write a smart contract that says that, you know, if we get 100 F, we buy a forest. If we haven't got 100 F within the next, you know, whatever, two weeks, the money just gets automatically returned by the smart contract. That conditional commitment is going to let us like tunnel through so many like unstable social situations. And I would like, I mean, a couple of examples like yesterday, um, the Julian Assange Dow raised $18.5 million for Julian Assange's legal defense, right? There are, but there are many, many people who would be like, feel uncomfortable about publicly donating to that. But because it's now, because it's now a Dow, they can, they can do it. So I think you're going to see a lot more popular causes like this um, start to, to switch to using Dow's. Like, I mean, can you imagine a charity turning around and sending out a couple of tweets and getting 20 million bucks? Like it's, it really is an incredible piece of technology. And I don't think people have, have um, clocked on, on how game changing it's going to be for society. Well, I think, I think the big thing is it's such a different way of thinking about, um, you know, about, about the system value systems and, and how to, how to distribute um, value that it's going to take a while for our minds to get around changing that it's been in progress for so long for, through so many important um, and critical situations but certainly certainly the crises multiple that we have in hand um, prompt us to do this and I'm, I'm quite interested in your nft part of it um, what are the nfts that are generated <laughs> within but your they started like i like naively i i said that we would take five thousand photographs of the of the forest so yeah. each nft would be an individual photograph and then we went out and like tried to take all the photographs and oh my god it's like so long to take five thousand <laughs> photographs and after you've photographed like the same tree from like five different angles we're like we got up to like 1200 photographs and then i realized like it's actually not sustainable because if we want to buy more forests we want to be able to sell the NFTs in advance of owning the forest. So mm-hmm. um, instead of doing the liquidity mechanism where we issue tokens and you can exchange the tokens for NFTs, which is very gas expensive, um, I switched to using um, algorithmically generated trees like that get automatically, um, I'll, I'll put them on screen here, that get automatically sort of like randomly created. And um, I spent like a whole weekend writing code to generate lots of different types of trees. It was quite fun. Um, that is awesome. Yeah, and that that will that will sort of let me that would let the project um, sell NF trees, um, which are algorithmically generated, and then potentially give people the option to like switch their algorithmic tree, which is like a placeholder, if you like, for an actual photograph of a tree, if they want, if they want to awesome. gift like if they want to gift like a photo NFT um, as part of a gift, then they can do they can do so. And um, do you think that, do you see potential for the connection between um, the NFT buyer and the actual piece of land? Like, do you mm. think that there's potential for visitation or remediation work? And maybe yeah. there's, you know, like um, badges of, of action or... Yeah, yeah, all of that stuff, all that stuff's there. possible. To, to cover off one little... Point. we did start off saying it was we, we were going to try and make it like an actual tree like one nft equals one tree but um we talked to some ecologist friends and they were like don't do that because that creates a perverse incentive to plant too many trees right and ah. the, the best thing for the ecology for the for the ecology is actually diversity so then we were like okay we'll make it like more generic we'll make it like um like a what three words three meter square so it's about equivalent so each nft is about equivalent to a three meter square 
and then you get the GPS coordinates. So you can go to your actual spot where your actual photo was taken. But again, that sort of that means that we have to have acquired and own the land before we raise the money, which is sort of the wrong order. Um, right. So, uh, yeah, so what so what we settled on is these NFTs give you a right, a, it's a governance token and a stewardship token, and it gives you the right to to vote on how the, the woodland is is managed and protected. It gives you the right to access it. Like you are you have full, like it's not trespass if you go onto the onto the woodland. If you have, hold an NFT, you are entirely entitled to to go there. And some of the NFTs have special permission rights attached to them. So uh like a few NFTs give you the right to do something like um, scatter scatter your family's ashes there, or I don't know, bury your wow. bury your cat. Or one of the rights that is conferred by one of the NFTs is the right to go metal detecting because it's actually like it's actually on the side of an ancient hill, and there was a fort built on top of the hill. So there's probably all sorts of like Bronze Age and Iron Age um, arrowheads and stuff down there if you want to ha have a look. So with that, that's one of the rights. Um, and then it's it's such a beautiful space we thought as well that people might want to use it for wedding photos in spring. So um, you can get, you can buy the NFT that actually confers the right to to use it for photography as well. So, um, those are those are some of the NFTs that are that are um, included in it. Um, but more, but more importantly, like, it's just a, it's about giving communities the ability to own the things around them they care about. Like when you walk down the street, you're deriving amenity value from the beautiful trees and the parks and the woodlands. But you can't afford, like most people can't afford to buy a whole woodland. Just because they walk their dog through it but they can afford to like buy a couple of shares in the woodland you know for and sure I, I love this idea that eventually people will own the things around them they care about like everyone should instead of having like a wallet that contains nothing but some money they'll have a wallet that contains you know their shares in an art project and the contribution they made to a charity and like a card that gives them a discount at a restaurant they supported when the restaurant was starting up like you should you should have right. so much more in your wallet that connects you to the fabric of society around you Right, and it moves it moves our um it moves our system from a possession and object um society to an experiential and um, interactive society. Yeah. And um, I, I can which... imagine I can imagine things where like in the future, like I mean, very very soon, I think you'll be able to you'll you'll go to like I don't know like a Patagonia website, and you'll be able to like click the Web three button, and it'll be like, oh, you've got a tree down NFT, you get ten percent off your Patagonia stuff, right, or you might, yeah. you know, like by showing that you have actually supported causes, like you might have given to a homeless charity and you get a discount at Airbnb, or you might have, like, there's so many ways that like these digital goods become like card, there's become actual valuable things that can follow you around. Yeah. And then, um, and I think that the value becomes, you know, we start seeing value completely different um, as something apart from us, but more something that is within us that we are able to enact. So nobody, everybody, nobody is poor, mm. for, for example, because everybody has the, the um, ability to do something, mm. you know, and, and, and that something can liberate you to do, you know, things that you otherwise wouldn't be able to do. Um, and so that opens up markets and totally disrupts everything that's being yeah. created before. And one of the things that I, we haven't done yet, but I'm pretty excited about is, this idea that we will set up um, bounties on the way on the, mm -hmm. the tree down member site and things like the local scout community might be able to go and do some of the work that we need to do, like removing some of the like there's too much holly on, a, on it. So like holly is a native species, but like there's just too much of it. You want to cut, cut it back a bit, but we might have a system whereby like every time the scouts basically like, you know, remove a, a couple of cubic feet of, uh, of holly, they get one of the tree token, they can exchange for an NFT and they can sell those or gift those on. Right. So, but just by right. like, you can best create this like economy that doesn't, that doesn't have fully fungible tokens like cash, like cash is so valuable because it's valuable for everything. Right. But you can create, you can create bounties and tokens that sort of like keep that value in the economy. It means that the scouts can, instead of like spending their money on amazon.com and it goes to Liechtenstein or something, right? They can, they can have these tree tokens that they can, they can use to generate value in their local area. It's like similar to the, the Brixton pound or, or some of the other like local, uh, like Ithaca has a, has a, has an Ithaca US dollar as well. You can only spend in Ithaca. Right. Exactly. And I mean, you can get so many, um, you know, your local produce makers, would be interested in conserving their biological area, and so, you know, there's discounts that could be that could be made there, and 
hopefully governance um, as we know it today could um, tap into some of this and, and maybe there's there's a lot of subsidies for citizen science. Um, so yeah, yeah, that sounds good. The, yeah, the, the Treatise as a, as a project is kind of, it was a proof of concept and um, I learned a lot and I think everyone's learned a lot and hopefully they're and hopefully we'll be able to share more information with other DAOs so that we can be replicated. Like tons of people have reached out and, and asked how we did it so they can copy it. Um, my like my particular skill set, I'm a I'm a founder of of companies, and my particular skill set is that I'm too dumb to realize that something's a bad idea, so I just do it anyway. So I usually <laughs> just do things and then work out why they were a bad idea later. So the right. two DAOs, like a lot of people are, are like talking about doing it, but we just did it. And then now I can tell you why, like all the, all the ways that it doesn't work. So the main output from the tree DAO, I think is, is going to be explaining to people how, like how to do this and like which bits are hard and which bits we can work on in the future. Right. Right. And I, I mean, I think a, a big takeaway for me, um, from, from our perspective, just during this hack and trying to figure out the token economics of it all. And, um, is, that there may be more value in a sort of like in a reward badge of proof of attendance, proof of action, um, mm. than in an actual token because of you know fluctuations. Say for example. Yeah. Um, so so I think that's that's something I've 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 learned from this conversation anyway as well, mm. um, and. I, the the last question I have for you is your NFTs that you've created from from the park. Where do you host them? So they're on Ethereum, um, which means that you can you can buy or sell them on any NFT marketplace. But OpenSea okay. is probably the the place where most people um, find them. Right. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, and do you have an example of well, like what one of? Yeah. Um, if you go to OpenSea and search for the tree down uh the tree so here is the uh here is the um an example so these are the this is what it looked like when we were doing the actual um photo photography NF nfts cool. um, and here are the uh some pretty terrible but some of them are okay like this one's quite a good tree this is the nfts <laughs> nfts um yeah so this like if someone wants to join the project they can just come here and, and buy one like you can pick a you can pick one you can pick one up for about 150 150 bucks i think there's cheap ones in that i think you can like there are some for like 70 or 80 bucks that you can join um and uh and, and just join the join the project and and then that gives you part of it uh, part of the governance mm -hmm. yep so once you have that you can log into the member site this is one of the ones i was, I was saying with uh this one here has the right to scatter your ashes so there's a under um, properties, you can see there's a the memorial right is conferred with, by ownership of this uh, of this uh, this NFT. And do you think there's something to be said for, like um, you know, this seasonality, right? So there is scarcity in that DAO. I mean, in that NFT, because uh, obviously nature changes, and 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 mm. do you think there's something to be said for? It was at that time in that place. Um, yeah, there was like I did want to. I wanted to do seasons. Like I wanted to do like the spring collection, the winter collection. Um, it, it's yeah. It, it was just a bit out of order. Like if you, if the project is going to be a model for other projects, then like the, there's three models, right? Like there's three options. One is you you buy the forest and then you mint photographic NFTs, which is the hardest because you actually have to have the money to buy the forest first. The second one is you do a liquidity token that people can swap for the NFTs later, but that's very gas intensive and that's sort of what killed the tree DAO. And the third one is that you mint them as as algorithmically generated trees, but then you give people the option to like log into the member site and swap them for um, for photo trees if they want to give a photo tree as a gift. Right, right, right. Got it. Thank you for sharing. No worries. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Cheers.